All right, come on, give me the stops. All right, everybody, this is Ringside Zone Nocturnal. We about to get it in. Thank you so much for joining us, and um, we about to have an amazing show. So with that said, let's kick things off. Come on, play that intro. Uh, we back at it. Y'all know what it is. Trey Amazing, your favorite part-time stripper, part-time pastor, but full-time dating commentator. And I'm kicking it again with my fam, Mickey Royale. And uh, we about to do it up big again. You know, Cheyenne, she's got to be fashionably late. But, you know, it's like they say, when you're important, people will wait. So, uh, but uh, as prolific and astonishing as she is, we're going to keep it moving. And when she walks in here and makes a grand entrance, we got, we're going to make way. So thank you guys for staying up and uh, tuning in to Nocturnal. Um, Nikki and I have an awesome topic that we feel is very relevant, something that a lot of you out there can probably relate to, especially new couples, committed couples, married couples, no matter if you're traditional, poly, you know, swinging, whatever the case may be. But let's be honest. Let's, let's break it down, okay? The porn business, as you know, is a multi-billion dollar business okay porn is everywhere you can't get on the internet without seeing pop-ups for porn gambling credit repair or whatever but it's out there you know and if you had a you know depending on how old you are if you're a grown-ass person and you've never seen at least one porn scene in your life then frankly i feel sorry for you you are um a bit of the pride but no matter how you feel about it we recognize and acknowledge that porn is a, as the years progress, it becomes more and more accessible. So, all right, okay, Cheyenne is here. Okay, we uh, she's just in time. And, um, you know, this is this is a topic that I feel like um, everybody, feel like, everybody um, can chime in, but the reason why I intentionally want to highlight the, um, Okay, come on in, Cheyenne. Try and bring you. Okay, in. come on in, Cheyenne. The reason why I want to highlight the, 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 um, the, the married couples, especially because the married couples, a lot of people have their thoughts and opinions as far as how um how porn ultimately affects a marriage. Let me say that again. You know, just regardless of your you know religious views, political views, whatever the case may be. A lot of people have their opinions about porn um, influences or negatively affects a relationship or marriage. But today's show, we want to talk to people who have a very keen insight on how porn can actually benefit. You know what I'm saying? How benefit? You know, we can you can actually use porn to benefit and otherwise dull relationship, dull marriage, or however you want to call it. So um, StreamYard is definitely giving me some issues, and I'm trying to unmute um, Mick. Hold on, hold on, Mickey. I keep clicking the button, and yeah, my this is how you know you need a new laptop. So hold on one second, everybody. Dang. And Cheyenne is frozen now. While StreamYard is giving me grief on these technical issues, I'm going to keep talking. So, and I'm spinning. My little circle is spinning. There are a lot of people out there, including myself, 
fans of porn. I know I'm. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Click your unmute. It's right there on your thing. Can you hear me? Raise your hand if you can hear me. Click your button. Click your unmute on your screen. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. I can hear you fine. Yeah. So we can wait on Trey Amazing. Why is it echoing? Why is it echoing? Slow motion pixels and stuff. Am I echo echoing? Now you're on mute. I can't hear you. You can hear me now, right? You can hear me now, right? Yes. Why does it echo like that? So while we were on Trey, what would you like to discuss? Let's discuss. Uh, I know. Any questions, comments? Please shout them out at us. Real talk. Come on, wake up. Hmm. <laughs> what are we lighting up here? Some. What type of herbage are you smoking here? Garbage. Garbage. I mean, you could have at least, you know, kind of embellished Acetate? a little bit. What? Acetate? Hold on. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't have time to roll my own. Got some right here. By all means, take your time. By all means, take your time. Why is it echoing? Why is it echoing? Is it still? How is it? All right, I'm back. Can y'all hear me? Still bad? Can y'all hear, hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah. 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 Can y'all hear me? Yes. 
All right, doing what some had to do with some uh, technical issues. Had to do with some, uh, technical issues. But uh, yeah, so while we're talking about we're talking yeah. about like porn and porn's effect on a marriage, um, and of course, you know, everybody's gonna have an opinion. Course, everybody's gonna, you know, everybody's gonna have an opinion. Everybody's gonna what do you guys think? Like, you know, we can talk at nauseum about people's opinions on the negativity of porn. What about some of the positive things as far as how porn can affect a marriage? As far as how porn can affect a marriage. Cheyenne, let's start with you since you were late. Cheyenne, let's start with you since you were late. Well, um, well, you know, a lot of people are they're dull. They're kind of dull, and I think it it could spice it up. Just um, uh, just try try something different. I mean, uh, like for myself, uh, I'm into all genres. I'm just um, I'm, I'm out there with my style of porn. Kind of true. I, you know, I'm into the cold. I'm into, the, excuse me. Tell the truth. I'm into the group. Tell the truth. <laughs> okay, am I not? Please, what am I miss? Am I met? Uh, what? What am I not um, mentioning? You know what you really like to watch. Please. Stop but in terms of, let me ask you, and this well, is, this is a question for both Mickey, for both Mickey and Diane. Check this out. For the married couples out there who, yeah, and for me, I got to be honest, I hate the phrase spice things up because it's so cliche at this point. Um, I hate the whole spice it up. But for the couples out there who are watching porn, who may need some ideas, how can porn be a benefit? How, How can, can we remove the stigma about being in a, um, a healthy relationship and a marriage and also watching porn? A, a healthy relationship and a marriage and also watching porn. Mm, I'm just saying, I, I, I know we all have that little, we all have that freaky side of us. I mean, come on, there's um, some things that we would want to try in our relationship. And I'm saying just... Go to your mate and just tell them, you know, I, I would. Okay, you said not spice it up. But let's freak it. You know, let's uh freak this out. <laughs> what do you, you know, what would be your wording? How would you, you know, how would you word that? You know, take it to the next level. I mean, let's bring some spice into it. Let's, you know, some heat. You know, um, I'm just saying, like for myself, I've just, I, I'm just not um. Oh, wham, bam, just regular. I, I, per, I prefer um, cuckold. I mean, I'm really into that lately. Ooh. I've been watching because Ooh. it kind of takes a lot to get me there. I'm more, I'm more cerebral. I just am. That's me, you know, and that's how I get off. I'm not so you're sick, you're sexual. Yes, I'm cerebral. So you're sick, you're sexual. Excuse me? Sapiosexual, you know, people who are sexually attracted to, you know, people who are sexually, you know, people's mental, being, you know, a person's intellect, you know, a person's uh, smarts turns you on. Cheyenne, your mic is off. Okay. Mickey, what about you? Cheyenne. What, about, uh, what was the question? So Cheyenne, really, for her, it's not about the wham, bam, the, the raw, you know, fucking uh, uh, porn, which, let's be honest, you got some porn um, that is sensual, that is romantic and whatnot, but Cheyenne really prefers what she says, the more sensual, the more romantic or romantical, as I like to say. But what about you? In terms of a couple, any couple, regardless of their traditional or non-traditional, what do you see or how can you recommend how porn can improve a couple's sex life? I say that they should start off with softcore porn. Softcore porn tends to be more romantic. It uh, involves a lot of foreplay, which hardcore porn doesn't have. Uh, hardcore porn within the last 20 years have turned into virtual rape fantasies as far as I'm concerned. It was more central in the 70s, seeing how I've been watching since I was eight years old. So I noticed that porn in the 70s and early 80s, they start off their scenes fully clothed and they have to undress and it was kissing and it was touching and they, they start off with oral sex. Well, now the girls walk in fully clothed as strippers and the guys are half naked already. So it just looks like a 
trick hoe type situation, which has never been sensual and that won't do anything for a couple. You know, so if a couple wants to spice up their thing, I would prefer softcore porn for them. And it would almost be in a situation where it's like a swingers party, but they're on screen and you're here and it would be more of a realistic aid, you know, as opposed to a hardcore porn, which almost looks like bludgeoning at certain at certain points. It's about pain. It's about thrashing. I mean, listen to the, uh, the terminology that the people use nowadays. They say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go beat it up. I'm gonna go hit it. I'm gonna go smash. That doesn't sound romantic at all. I don't wanna smash my lady. You know, I don't wanna beat her up. And I definitely don't wanna hit her. But those are the terms that they use nowadays to describe sexual intercourse, which is tiptoeing on bestiality if you wanna actually go there because it gets primal. You know what I mean? And that's not really a couple's trying to spice it up. That's just an act. It's almost like slap boxing. So if they were going to watch anything, I suggest, you know, movies like Nine and a Half Weeks or things like that, or the one with the Nicole Kidman and all of that, where you really don't see and it leads more to the imagination and the imagination is where the sexuality grows. Not in what you see or show, but what you don't see and what you don't show. And then the couple can jump in kind of like double dutch and do their own thing. You know how to wait for the rope and to break and they jump in. Did you, did you really just uh, analogize the double dutch? Well, yeah, my mind goes in a lot of places. Anyone who knows me, I'm all over the place. But that's what I saw. The ropes turning, you're like waiting on your turn to jump in. And, you know, you want to ease into things. And it depends on how far down the romantic la ladder the couple is. You know, where are the problems? Yeah, Cheyenne, yeah. Mike's still is not working. Cheyenne is talking, but we can't hear. And I don't have her on mute. Oh. And I can tell she's got a lot to say, but so, and I'm showing my age. Mickey, I'm, I'm about to show my age real quick. Okay. So I grew up watching the Lady Chatterleys, the Emanuels, and the, um, trying to think, the other cinema, all the sophomore porn was on Cinemax or, you know, mm -hmm. Skinemax. So that was our, ver in the 80s and 90s, that was our version of porn before we got to the hardcore stuff. So that was like our gateway. And you're right. You're actually right. When I think about it in retrospect, when you think about the old school stuff on Cinemax, it was more uh, creating a scene, creating more of the romance. It wasn't uh, straight just go in there and start fucking and, you know, everybody out. It was setting up a scenario, setting up a fantasy, then two people undressing one another and getting into the foreplay, getting into the, you know, the heavy kissing, the, the so on and so forth. So to your point, I guess for a married couple who, you know, if the shit has gotten dull so far, if they're watching something like that, maybe that could, you know, help stimulate some ideas as far as even role playing. Shit, let's just be honest. I mean, role playing, you know, for some people, that's that's not really vanilla. I mean, that's just kind of taking a walk on the wild side, but you see a lot of that in porn. Um, you see quite a lot of it. I mean, I'm not trying to give myself away as far as my, um, how much porn I watch, but, you know, you're always going to hear there's so many people on YouTube with videos about why you should watch porn. But I wanted to at least have a show to kind of talk about there are some slivers of benefits of how porn can uh, positively affect a marriage or relationship. Well, anything you're watching visually affects you physically. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've watched Rocky and got up and exercise after the movie was over. So it affects you. That's why we play certain things when we go to the gym to lift heavy weights. We play certain, I mean, you don't play love songs when you're on the treadmill. No, it, it, it doesn't affect your body that way. So anything you're watching, anything you're listening to will affect your behavior one way or another, whether you know it or not. But it depends on the necessary uh, situation that the, the problem that the couple is facing. Hmm. Is it an intimacy issue? Is it a... Um, erectile dysfunction issue is it the fact that she's going through menopause issue is the fact that she's not attracted to this man anymore issue i mean there's so many issues that you can think of and porn helps a lot with that it's been several women you know 
I have no secrets. My life has literally been open book. It's uh, it's been several women that I was not attracted to in my maybe about 25 years ago. And I could look over them at the TV screen. And when I look over at the TV screen and I look back, all of a sudden the two people get blended together. And now all of a sudden, when I lose my attraction for her, I just look up and I'm sure they do the same. You know, sometimes in bed, when we when we're not watching porn, couples have been known to visualize. You know, I have no problems with that. You know, uh, I remember my ex-wife had this thing for Luther Vandross and she was telling me how yeah, she was 12 years my senior. So she I was in my 20s and she was like, Luther Vandross, this Luther Vandross, that. And I said, he really gets you that excited. She's like, oh, God. Luther. So I decided to play his music and put his poster on the wall. What do I care? I'm here. Look at him all you want. <laughs> Listen to his music. Yeah, that's me. That's that's me right there on the wall. Yeah. Pretend I'm Luther and do whatever. And it, it did make a big difference. Cheyenne, are you on mute yet? Tell her to push that button at the bottom. Can she hear? Cheyenne, you're talking, but we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. Push the mute at the bottom of the screen. The unmute. I know I don't have her on mute on my end. Yeah. But so again, you know, for me, I don't have, I think just like with anything, you know, anything in excess can be a bad, you know, can be bad for a marriage or relationship. Real talk. Um, Y'all, excuse me, I got my. Now her thing is going from mute to unmute, mute to unmute. It's on mute now. I'm looking at it. So if you're a couple out now there, unmute, no matter who you are, be again. again, you know, straight, heterosexual, homosexual, polyamorous, whatever the case may be, anything in excess, even porn, can be harmful. But if you use it in moderation and you use it strategically and deliberately, and you can identify exactly which areas um, need the, I guess, the, the improvement. Uh, like Mickey said, I mean, if it's a case of you just don't find your your mate, your partner attractive, or maybe the foreplay is gone, maybe the intimacy, the romance, then you can, you can I guess, be deliberate as far as targeting those particular areas uh, versus just, you know, going straight gonzo. Because, yes, um, a lot of porn, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a guru on porn, but let's be honest, a lot of porn is just straight raw fucking. It's just straight, you know, just two people, you know, answering into a scene. Can you hear me? No, I can hear you fine. Oh, you, I can't hear her. We're it working was... on Cheyenne. We have tonight. We have some technical difficulties. But again, two people like what Mickey said. Well, Mickey, let me ask you. I don't know. I don't know how if you're still boned up a porn now. Do they make any sensual porn out now? That I know of, no. Everything is streamed. You know, it's just scene by scene. I was part of the last generation that made actually movies. But now everything is just this scene, this scene, this scene. And it just gets to the point, you know. And uh, I don't think people need to learn how to procreate. There's billions of us on this planet. But people need to learn sensuality. A lot of people don't know what foreplay is. Think it's on a baseball diamond, you know, and, um, you know, in the group, I talk a lot about love and it's really hard to be sensual and romantic with someone you're not in love with. And when if you're in love with that person, it gets easier. You know, mm. you don't have to think of anything. There's no anxiety. You just flow with it. Whatever you feel like touching, you touch. Whatever you feel like tasting, you taste. So from when you were in your heyday, and I'm not sure how long you've been retired. I'm not sure the last time you were, but what are some, what are some genres or what are some, some of the most major changes? I know you said there's less sensuality and less um, foreplay, but what are some other differences now that you see in porn as far as, you know, do you have additional, you know, genres or subgenres or um, additional fetishes? that are out now that weren't out when you were doing it? Like, what are some of the biggest changes and uh, how do you think they affect marriage? I don't, well, I, how they might affect marriage as far as sex is related is because it's become so cold and callous. 
you know, it's just become an act. There's nothing really special about it. You know, it's it's just something to do. And it started like gradually. Pastime. Coming in. Huh? Like a it's pastime, like, just something to do. Yeah, just, you know, it, 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 it started with, you know, a lot of the language, like I said, smash, hit it, you know, things like that. And then, you know, demoralizing terms like thought and B word. John Holmes never used the B word. Ron Jeremy never used the B word. They didn't say things like that. They were happy that this woman was over here. They felt privileged that she came to spend their time with them. She wasn't a B, she wasn't this, she wasn't an H word, none of those things. So as they started to um, demoralize them, it's not special anymore. It's just nothing. Then you put in the fact that they don't get undressed they just walk in with stripper heels and stuff. It became less about sex at home. Because John Holmes, he started his his things with clothes on that I'm wearing. And he, you would literally see him take off his shirt. Ron Hightower, the ones in the 80s, you would literally see them get undressed. But now they start off naked. It's a, it, it turned from looking at the camera to see what you're doing at your home to looking backstage at a strip club. It became all strip related. And then here comes the rap music involved in it. So it just looks like backstage at the BET Awards with a bunch of groupies. And that's not sexual or sensual at all. That's borderline almost assaultish. And mm-hmm. that's not what a couple is trying to do. You know, it, it like I said, it becomes, I mean, even in the language, when you go on like X videos and stuff like that, it doesn't say, sorry for using your name, it doesn't say Byron Long and Cheyenne Fox. It says Byron Long versus Cheyenne Fox like Floyd Mayweather versus Oscar De La Hoya, like they're fighting. Like this is a challenge. Like they're going like who's going to tap out first. Who's going to be yeah, who? like who's going to tap out first, you know? And it um it become it beca- that turns it into a sport. And I don't hear love making at all. So you're looking at a couple. They can get no tips from this. How to damage each other? You know, who can beat it up the worst? Who can outlast the other one? Can she take all of this? Those are not romantic terms. That's not even romantic language. And a couple is trying to bring romance and attraction and sensuality and a sexual spirit back into their practice. And all they're doing is just getting off. Mm. So now this woman that you're in love with or semi in love with or have a relationship with, where you just turned her into a thought and she just turns you into a penis with legs. So it's desensitizing you at home. So it's actually having the reverse effect than the effect it's supposed to have. It's supposed to bring you closer together, but really, you might have more physical activity. You might just be screwing, but I mean, it looks like animals on the National Geographic Channel. There's so no check this out. So, so yo, let me let me pose this to you. So, do you think with all the negativity um, that porn receives from mainstream community, I mean, a lot of people saying that porn is unrealistic. Porn is just a fantasy. Porn is not something that's really applicable to everyday couples and everyday life. Do you think that based on what you're saying, do you think that has a lot to do with how porn has changed? I mean, like you said, back in the 70s and 80s, it was more sensual, it was more romantic. Do you think that if more porn was out now, if we had gone back to the that day in porn where it was commonplace for porn to be more um to be to look more like everyday couples versus, you know, a thug and a stripper banging it out and whatever. Do you think that that would lessen the negative stigma <coughs> and be more applicable and positive to relationships? No, because no. porn caught just as much flack back then as it does now because of um, America's view on sexuality. Remember when you used to watch? Well, I'm a little older, but. Remember when you used to watch porn back in the day, you had to fast forward to the sex? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had to go all the way to it because they're talking, they're interacting. You know why? Because they were human beings. And that's actually how human beings get the thing going. They just don't grab each other and bend each other over. They don't just meet and, hey, how you doing? And boom. No. Nowadays, you don't have to fast forward. It just clicks right in. And it goes with a lot of principles of, I want what I want and I want it now. So then you're here and get minds. And you got two people in a bed racing to have an orgasm first. You know, try building a relationship on those kind of principles and practices you want. You just have a partner. You know, you have a, a, a screw buddy. You have a, you know, a thought. 
over there, yeah, I go bang her out. We ain't saying that. No, it, when the way they talk about it, you're not even sure if they're talking about a human being or if they're talking about banging out a job or, you know, I got to go bang this pie out and make this dinner. Let me go bang this dinner out. Let me bang these dishes. I've heard guys say that too. Damn, dude, uh, my folks coming home. We're real young. Let me go bang these dishes out. And that's the way you refer to the love of your life, banging mm. her out. Really? <laughs> Good now, yeah, I mean, you're right. Well, no, you're absolutely correct, man. It's it's um as the language changes, so does the behavior. But porn has always been um. I mean, you know, before these guys caught flack, Larry Flint caught flack. You know, Hugh Hefner caught flack, and yeah, I mean, Hugh Hefner, you could really just go make you a meal and come back in the sex scene hadn't even started yet. It was an actual movie. Mm. No, you're right about that. Maybe come back in. Maybe she goes out and comes back in. Maybe it'll pop on. Yeah, Shane, I agree. Uh, Try to log back. Try to log off and log back in. That may work. Like click leave studio and then come back in. But we can't hear you. So there you go. So I mean, because you hear all the time that. Porn is just a fantasy and it's just straight up not real. You know, they make you, I mean, you can get on YouTube right now. There are, there are videos out there about how porn is not real. Porn is not reality. Porn is this and that and the third. And porn ruined my marriage. Uh, because of porn, I can't satisfy my wife. Or porn, you know, women talk about their men watching porn and porn gives them unrealistic expectations of them in the bedroom because i mean let's be honest i mean because you've had even in ringside and really quickly before we go on shout out to ringside if you're out there watching please find ringside on facebook go to your search bar and type in ringside llc and join the facebook group don't forget to check out our re um design newly designed website ringsidedebates.com check out our merch ringsidedebates.com forward slash merch pick up some t-shirts mugs and uh masks but uh, Mickey, real quick, um, based on comments from the from a lot of the women in the ringside group, you know, they opinionated. They got their opinions and they're uh, they're not shy about sharing them. They want the men. They're very um, intent on letting the men know that, look, that is not reality. My body does not look like that. You know, they're quick to let the men know, look, I have stretch marks. I have cellulite. I have baby fat. I have this and the third. Just because you see Jada Fire or you see Beauty or you see um, Pinky do that in a porn, that don't mean you can do that with me in the bedroom. And so I know that with a lot of women in the group, that becomes an issue. When men, when their men watch porn, regardless if they're watching it with their woman or they're watching it solo, a lot of women complain that, look, my man goes and watches porn and expects me to hang off a chandelier and do the exact same thing these porn stars do. What I mean, some of the things I can understand as far as, OK, that's just that's just a fantasy. Don't try to replicate that in your real life. But I mean, come on. I mean, it can't all be blamed on just fantasy. You know, just, you know, a man coming home after a hard day's work. And his woman just surprising him with a blowjob or something like that. It can't all be just uh, fantasy. You know what I mean? You have to understand what the woman is saying. When she's saying that, um, don't expect me, uh, you know, don't do what what they're doing on there. What she's really saying is, I'm not going to do what she's doing. She can't do what she's doing. But what she's really saying is, are you there, Miss Fox? Uh, this thing is <laughs> look guys I, it's not me it's not me okay don't worry about it. what she's really saying is that um don't expect me to do what she's doing now, she can't do it or that she refuses to do it now a lot of times you got to understand we're shooting the point that's a movie we call cut a lot that 45 minute scene you just watched might have t- taken two days we call cut we bring in body doubles. this is a movie you don't see us do the blend, but a lot of times the guy that's on time, when you get on the side scene, it's not his penis. We match the body tone, so we might have another guy doing the lower body work. 
and then the guy at the top, he was like a mom. Those are two different guys. There's a lot of things we do on the that you're not privy to. So you say, God, that guy banged her an hour. No, he didn't. That was at two o'clock. He took a break at three. He went and had lunch. He came back. We put the wardrobe back. He got right back to the scene. We did the event. We took six hours. And you're trying to. Really, really quickly, I want I want to ask that because uh, I want to give Cheyenne because Cheyenne has been off, so I want to give her an opportunity to um, I want I want her to um, kind of catch up. So because you know I do agree with you because even I know that I've been watching porn long enough to know that forty five or hour long scene that could have been three four hours that could have been you know people go to lunch. Dude's got to recharge. Sometimes dude can't get it up. He got to go drink a Red Bull. He got to go take a Viagra. He need a fluffer, mm -hmm. all that. So I agree with you. I've, I'm at a point now because I'm old. I realize <laughs> that 45 minute Link. sex scene just didn't take 45 minutes. But Cheyenne, you've been away. Um, you've been having some technical difficulties, so it's all good. So I'm going to continue to keep drinking my drink. But please chime in on the benefit of porn to a marriage, if any, or the benefit or, of porn or how or, sensual you know, porn may or may not be more applicable than well i'll just say i have i have some i have Cheyenne might just trip it tonight. Okay. All right. We're going to come back to Cheyenne. Cheyenne Mike is not working with us and not cooperating tonight, but that's okay because we're going to continue for We appreciate her um, participation, but her mic is not, is not feeling us tonight, but it's all good. Cheyenne's mic is conservative. Don't want to talk about porn. And I'm so tripping because I'm like, I know Cheyenne got some great stuff she want to share with us. I'm so I'm I'm so perturbed right now. Cheyenne got some great feedback, but but it's still Mick, Mickey and I, we're gonna hold it down. We're gonna continue to hold it down. Um try to log off and log back in, Cheyenne, if you can. If you can hear me, try to log off and log back in. But Cheyenne, we still love you. We still love you, baby. We ain't forgot about you, but Mickey again, um, and I really wish I had one of those. So um, take a puff for me, okay? I'll, hold on. Okay. Take a puff for me, because right now all I got is my drink, and uh, that's the only thing that can sustain me right now. So, um, but yeah, I agree with you, man. Because yeah, I'm not really. I don't have uh, Cinemax anymore, but yeah. Back in the day, I think a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of the guys out there in Gen X around my time, they can relate to sneak, you know, when your parents are asleep and you sneaking in the other room or sneaking downstairs to watch Cinemax and you watch the Lady Charlies or the Emanuels or the, you know, it was so many different titles um, on Cinemax. And it certainly is not, I think that's a difference when you talk about hardcore versus softcore. Softcore didn't really, I guess, go straight, you know, straight to the punch. Softcore wanted to create a fantasy, wanted to create the um, the scenery, if you will. Cheyenne is back. All right, we can hear. Cheyenne, I don't know who who uh, that mic is. You need to fire that mic. That mic. I am. I will. I will. So, oh my goodness! So, right. so what's going on? What you saying? What you talking about? We were talking about the difference between softcore and hardcore porn, and how mm -hmm. as the years progress. I mean, it's twenty twenty one now, obviously, but you're seeing more. I mean, excuse me. You're seeing less and less of the softcore porn. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Softcore was more sensual. It did, it did involve more foreplay, more setting the scene. And you are seeing more of the just beat it up, you know, beat the pussy up and get out. I mean, what are your thoughts as far as the different thoughts? Oh my goodness. Well, I prefer the more sensual side. That's me. You know, that's the way I get my motor. You know. Revved up. That's how I get myself, you know, all pumped up. I just prefer soft porn. I mean, soft core. And just, um, 
that's just me. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm older, but I'm, I am more sensual and I, I'm more, um, virile now. Um, I just prefer more of the softer side. That's, that's me, you know, it just depends on the person, you know, really, it depends on the person, you know, mm -hmm. what say you, you know, Trey, uh, what's your style? What do you prefer? Does it depend on the day? Is it, you know, Depends on the okay. day, depends on the time, depends on how I'm feeling. I mean, because, yeah, you're right. Um, you know, maybe. <laughs> it depends. Sometimes I'm feeling romantic, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I want to just beat it up. Okay, let's yeah. be honest. I'm not, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit that. I mean, uh, blame some of the alcohol for that, too. Uh, Oh. But no, sometimes you do want to just beat the pussy up. I mean, you can watch. Look, I've had that happen to me. I have most certainly had that happen where I watch a porn, I watch a porn scene, and then that motivates me. Like, okay, when I see my girl, I'm just going to beat it up. I'm inspired. Like, I just want to raw dog, beat the shit up. But then sometimes you are inspired. You know, you can, I can listen to some Jodeci, some, some After Seven, some Albert. Sure, I'm like, okay, I want to make love. I want to be romantic. I want to be sensual. I want to take my time and do some little foreplay. So it depends on how I'm feeling at the time. But, you know, it can certainly, I can admit, I can certainly admit um, that porn can affect the relationship. It can affect it in a good and bad way. It can certainly make porn, I'll tell you like this, from my standpoint and from my perspective, porn can uh, make sex with your mate more exciting. It can give you ideas. It can give you alternatives because, let's be honest, you can be with someone, you can be in a relationship or a marriage with someone for so long, the sex gets monotonous, it gets routine, it gets predictable. There don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with watching a porn scene and getting some ideas as far as the different positions, some different voices, some different commands, some different safe words, whatever the case may be, as long as as you're not 100% reliant on that porn to get off because I have, and maybe you guys, I don't know the term for it, Mickey, Cheyenne, maybe you can help me. There is a term for people who honestly cannot um, get it up without porn. There, these, are, these are men, uh, and I'm pretty sure maybe women too, these are people who are in marriages and relationships who honestly, without porn, they cannot get around. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Have you ever heard of something like that? Something like that. Yeah, the the term escapes me. The term it's uh, basically when um, you you've stimulated yourself in that area, you know, for so long. It's just that you can't, you know, it's kind of hard to. Excuse me. What'd you say? Desensitized. That's what I was going to say. You become desensitized. You know. So in that aspect, I mean, I think that you know, there are plenty of videos out there that say, "Well, watching too much porn desensitizes you um, because you begin to become too immersed in the fantasy of porn, and then you forget about the actual reality, which is." Is the woman in front of you. The woman in front of you is not the porn star you just saw. The, the porn star you just saw, you know, she had a lot of preparation. She had a lot of coaching. She had a lot of assistance. You know what I mean? So I think that is when the demarcation between reality and fantasy kicks in and you realize, look, your marriage ain't that porn. It's just not. But, you know, you know, I'm a believer in, you know, uh, what is it? Um, throw, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There has to be, and we do know there is, there are slivers of positivity as far as how to bolster a sexual, hypersexual marriage without contaminating it. You know what I mean? I remember one time in the group. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> Yeah, uh, one time in the group, I told you all it takes is one good dance partner. If if you're dancing with Fred Astaire, and you're an amateur dancer, if you stand on his feet, then you're moving with him, and you're an you're a pro too. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't take two to tango. 
takes one to lead, one to follow. So a lot of times in porn, we wouldn't have a professional woman with a professional man. I really didn't have to book a lot of pro women. I did, but I would book amateur women, but I would professional guys. I never booked two amateurs together. So, cause the guy would take the lead, the woman would follow. If he moves her leg this way, all she has to do is relax and he can move it just like a dance. If I'm dancing on Fred Astaire's toes, I'm moving just like he is. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, I mean, you can motivate your partner easily. But it takes two. I mean, it takes one at least to know what he's doing, to take the lead. That can be the man, that can be the woman. Doesn't matter. I think the word is initiate. She'll follow. All she has to do is submit. All he has to do is submit. You go with the flow. You don't try to compete with what you see on television. But if he has something in mind and he's going with the flow, she can just roll with it. The problem is when you get into the no stop don'ts. I don't do this. I don't do that. Now oh, hell he he can't roll with his subconscious. He has to roll with his conscious mind and go, okay, what do I do now? Uh, duh. So now it becomes a task instead of just sensual lovemaking. You really don't need any instructions. You don't need a clock. You can hear the music playing between you. You don't even need music playing. It's, it's a beautiful dance, but one has to lead, you know, and it, 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 it shouldn't cross hairs. It doesn't have to cross hairs because you're just flowing. But when you get into the no stop don'ts, that's why we use that word uninhibited a lot. There are no, I remember, uh, I don't even want to go there, but someone I used go to there, know. Go there, go there, bro, go there. Someone I used to know, we used to say we don't use the N word in the bedroom. The N word is no. We don't use no. You flow. However it feels that way on that Monday, however it feels that way on that Tuesday, if it's going to be 10 minutes or 10 hours, you're not watching the clock. Because if you're watching the clock, you're doing something wrong. You're just flowing. You're just swimming. That's all you're doing. When you're at the beach and you're swimming, you're not really, what time is it? Hey, what time is it? How many strokes did I do? Hey, should I go underwater or go up? Okay, should I catch the top? Really? That's how you swim? You just flow with it. And if you just relax, a lot of sexual problems in the bedroom stem from anxiety. Overthinking. Mm. There's no thinking involved. There's Hold up. Really, really quickly. I'm going to turn Cheyenne's mic. She still had that echo while you were talking. But Cheyenne, um, I know you got a lot to say about that. What's your response? What's your response? Oh, my goodness. Just You just got to go with the flow. I mean, you, you, you guys read the body language, you know, of your partner, you know, what you will feel if they're, you know, if they're kind of, you know, they're, I say anxietized, if they're filled, you know, filled with anxiety. And, you know, it's just, again, you just kind of slowly move into it. You don't just pounce on the person, you know, you got to kind of, you, it's a delicate dance. It's, a, you know, <laughs> unless, you know, you feel that, that that's what they might want, you know, just, you got to kind of try a little bit of this. Well, There's nothing wrong with pouncing on your partner. No, heck no. But, you know, but you know when that time is, you know, when you, it, it's the feeling, you know, you know, when to just, you know, take, take charge, you know, move forward. You know, you don't have to, you just got to go for it. I, I just don't, I don't see how that's, um, how that could just really be an issue. Well, at least for myself, I, I ask for what I want in bed. Like, for instance, I prefer my partner to uh, enter the bedroom, enter the bed head first. And that's just how I, you know, that's how I like what, it. Wait a minute, what's that mean? What's that mean? Oh, head first. Enter the bed head first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you hear okay, me? I, I feel like I have virgin ears. I don't know what this means. And your liquor license. Lick them low first. <laughs> your uh, license. You got to lick it before you stick it. I mean. And afterwards. <laughs> okay. All right now. Um, come on. What? <laughs> what? Great mess. Come on, mess. Well, I have no disagreements there. You got to warm the motor before you just drive it. You let it idle up, and then you let it idle back down, and then you put it in reverse, and you pull it out the driveway. You don't just crank the engine and boom, boom. It'll freeze. That's not how you do things. You know? That's, that's, that's not how you do things. A lot of porn nowadays, um, 
Um, you know how porn, like you were talking about soft court, you watch that with a couple. Now it's more bachelor party-ish where a group of guys will sit around and almost cheer a guy on and he pounces this woman. It kind of reminds me of the lion chasing the gazelle down and you're like, yeah, it's almost like a sport. You know that? And if she wants to be pounced, her body language will say stuff. All you have to do is read. All you have to do is pay attention to her. Never take your eyes off her. She'll tell you what to do. She'll tell you when. She'll tell you how far. She'll tell you what's uncomfortable. She'll tell you what's comfortable. She won't say a word out of her mouth. But like I used to say in the group, the difference between fucking and making love, when you're fucking, you're trying to satisfy yourself. When you're making love, you're trying to satisfy your partner. Now, one person you know, me, that's, a, that's a good point. Let me let me transition really quick. I'm, I'm gonna mute Mickey's mic. That's a good point. Uh, Cheyenne, I know you got a response to that. Actually, I, I do agree with that a thousand percent. Fucking okay, I'm not gonna incriminate myself. How can I say this? I do agree with what Mickey said. Fucking really is about hey, please be one person that's usually yourself. But making love is about a mutual uh, transaction of pleasure. Diane, um, spill it. Say it all. I'm just saying um, I love foreplay. You know, I prefer Okay, excuse me. That's my back phone over there. <laughs> love for play, you know, lots of it, more of it. How you doing? <laughs> uh, for play, you can't get enough of that. Um, what say so, you, so, Royal? So let me ask you. So, so the softer ask, side so of form, form. because mm. we have to remind people, especially yeah. millennials. And uh, Z millennials, the generation Z, we have to remind people that there is a such thing as softcore porn. It's not all hardcore. There, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you are of a certain age and you classify as generation Z, there is a softcore out there where people are actually doing for play. Okay, for play exists. For play has a purpose. It is important. Um, um, and you know what? I got to be honest. I just thought about something. The sad part is, Cheyenne, and chime in if you think about it. You have some people out there who are of a certain age that don't even know what Oh, that's just so sad. That's so tragic. That's tragic. I mean, that's how you that's how you warm our bodies up. That's how you, you get the flower to blossom and to open up to you. You, you know, you have to lubricate us. You have to Come on, guys. I mean, you got to get in there now. Come on now. What is this with the, I mean, for yourself, uh, Trey, do you prefer to, do you get in there? I mean, do you, do you perform? Do you you get in there? Yes. 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 How about do you get in there? Yes. Do you know that you... I mean, it seems that she she's more prepared. She's more ready. She her body is calling for you. It's opening up. It's presenting itself. Like I said, that flower is opening up, Chief. Look, Cheyenne, really quick. I'm gonna let you finish, but let me let me preach a quick sermon out there to the Generation Z and maybe a few millennials. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna generalize all millennials because there's some good ones out there. But let me just say this. Um, um, foreplay is necessary. Foreplay is beautiful. Play. Foreplay is wonderful. Uh, fellas out there, if you are in that certain age bracket, like, look, okay, it's time to eat some pussy. Okay. Uh, don't you get a woman and you get a woman to agree and consent to have sexual intercourse with you? Great. That's a good thing, and I'm happy for you, whatever. However, you have to prioritize her pleasure as well. It can't be at 11 o'clock she gives consent, and at 11 o'clock you're trying to jab it in there. Like, no, dude, lick it. Like, Cheyenne, what'd you say? Lick it before you stick it? Uh, yes. Lick it from the front. Lick it from the back. Do something. You can't just... Come on, Zillennials, oh, like Zillennials, whatever you call themselves. Um, oh, my God, we should be teaching class because, no, that is a damn shame for these Zillennial women. If you are dealing with a man who is just um, trying to beat it up 
and not trying to warm up the oven. Like, look, someone, you know, someone said a long time ago, um, women are ovens. They're not microwaves, they're ovens. So you have to warm them up. Okay, they're not going to be warm and ready in 10 seconds. You have to give them time. And so, oh my God. Men and women, if you are in Generation Z, please learn something from these videos. Warm it up. Okay, do some oral. Do some, call some salad. Do something. Get it ready. Can you hear me? But, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. The best way is to make her pleasure your pleasure. You see what I'm saying? The best way is to make her pleasure your pleasure. It's not so much about warming her up. What warms her up warms you up. Foreplay sets the stage for the dance at hand. From foreplay, you will know whether or not she wants to be ravished. You will know whether or not she wants to be tantalized, sensualized, teased, the whole nine. You know that from foreplay. It sets the stage of the game. Think of foreplay as your point guard. Sometimes he passes the ball way down court and it's for the alley for the dunk. And sometimes, you know how they slow it down and thun, 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 thun. And they post up. And see, the point guard sets the stage of the play that's about to come. That's foreplay. You already know what kind of you dance she's going to do because you know how the fourth play rolls. And you have to make her pleasure your pleasure. See, it's not like I need to warm her up so I'm going to go down on her. That's what I want to do. So, as I'm warming her up, as she's getting pleasure, so am I. So am I. You know, you know what I mean? I want to tell someone, making your dreams come true is my dream. You, you see what I'm saying? So making you hot is what makes me hot. Really quickly, let me give Cheyenne the mic because uh, I know Cheyenne got a lot to Cheyenne, everything is written all over your face. We know you got a lot to say. Um, big, um, big talk. Okay. Big talk. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um. I don't have. I don't have. I, don't have, I, got, I, don't this. Have I got this. I got this. I'm just gonna this. suggest that I'm just gonna just kind of slide to the side and take a sip of my glass here. Let me. Uh, so here. Excuse me. Excuse me. A second. <clears throat> oh God! What the hell is that? Shit? What the hell is that? Make you got? Yeah. Oh. Uh, that, that, that was just an inside joke. Uh, we used to say that like, twenty years ago. Um, I really, I don't know if I should say it on here. I hope no kids watching, but I used to describe it as a uh, and champagne lifestyle. <laughs> Okay. Oh, All right. So I, I, I don't think I, I heard what I just heard. I'm pretend like I didn't hear it. Um, Cheyenne, you got Cheyenne, you got the floor. Cheyenne, please take it away. Audio. Oh. <laughs> no. Um. Hmm. Wow. Uh, question, please. This one is too much. Okay. Watch him. That's your cousin. Uh oh, I know that's my fam. I'm gonna look out for my blood, real, real talk. That's my fam. It's always, it's always a, a good deal with fam. Um, by she, you know, Cheyenne, we got a couple, we got a minute and a half left. Give us your final thoughts. You've been struggling with the audio um, the early part of the show, but give us your final thoughts as far as porn and marriage and benefits. How does porn benefit the marriage? Huh? Cuck holding. Let's try something new. Let's get into the cuck holding. Let's try. Yes, we got to get back on that. Let's yes, yeah, try something new. Did I? Whoa, was that too much for you? Was that? Um, um, I know what um, cuckolding is. I'm like, okay, wait. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay, so, the so really, cuckolding? Cuckolding? I'm just saying that's that's for me. That's me. I come on now. Let's just. You said, look, spice it up. Now yes, you can pick up. Yes, Remember, it's a dance. It is a dance. You know. It is a dance. Excuse me? 
It is definitely a dance. It I agree. Definitely a dance. I agree. I mean, you'll know. You'll know when the time is right. You'll you'll know when to add a little bit more. Oh, is that too much? Then you know, step back. But you gotta try. You gotta try something. Now, some some uh, women maybe a little bit more oral. Uh, look, I didn't want to keep using myself as an example, but if you have any, you want to ask me personally, you know, what I prefer, just ask me, ask me some, okay, I'm, like I said, what I'm do you, Cheyenne, what do you prefer? What do you prefer? Uh, I, I love to, I, I love to watch, okay, women really just going in. <laughs> I love watching women just go in on head. Okay, that's just what I like to watch, and that's just my thing. Okay, all right. And um, look, I'm not mad at that. Look, I'm not mad at all. Mickey, at all. what what and, are you into more? And I'm gonna just say this real quick. I'm gonna get some great sleep tonight. I know that. Right. Um, I, know. I was just um, like, damn. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> no, no, no. Cheyenne, no, no, be no, no. honest. Cheyenne, we got, we got, we got, um, we got half um, a minute left. Be honest, minute. and then I'm gonna pass the mic to Mickey, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this out really quickly. <sighs> Oral fixation. Oral fixation. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Um, you shouldn't. Cheyenne, look really quickly. Um, before we log out, do you have a, any books or websites you want uh, the followers to uh, find you on? Yeah, you guys hit me up, Cheyenne Fox six one at Gmail. He still got me. <laughs> you got me going. And um, you. Hey, don't leave me on the uh, ledge there. You, uh, what, what, what is it that you're into, uh, Mr. Royal here? Uh, what type? Okay, of we're gonna switch to Mr. Royal. Um, um, Mr. Royal, personally? what are you into? How do you want to close out uh, tonight's show? Oh God, two ways. Well, actually, I can't say what I'm into is illegal in 42 states. Uh, but. These days, personally, I'm more of a sensual person. You know, I'm really into monogamy now. It's kind of my thing. Go figure. Done it. <laughs> but no, you um, know, I really like the one-on-one -on -one dance. You know, of course, I always comment in your group about tying them up and spanking them. You know, we won't go there, but. You know, everybody knows I'm a little off, but yeah, I like to, um, I like, I like monogamy. That's really my thing now, getting deep into one person. I don't, you know, when I was younger, I used to pan for gold. You know what I mean? Now I just go really deep into one mind because I find that you can go so deep and you think you know everything about a person and you think you... And then you can just keep breaking more floors and breaking more floors. And you'd be surprised that librarian is, is a freak. But it just takes the right Fred Astaire to put her on his toes to dance correctly. So I really don't say like, you know, I'm into this, I'm into that, I'm into this, I'm into that. I'm into one person and we can do all of those things together. And it never gets old. I mean, creativity is just as vast as the mind and the mind is like the universe. We can do something different every day. And I swear, if we're together 20 years, we don't have to repeat anything. Watch me, <laughs> you know? But there's always that tying up and spanking thing. <sighs> you said be honest. Yes. So uh, mention one of your parties. He's, ay, ay, ay. No. I do want to say really quickly to end up the show. I am just like my cousin. I'm a one woman band. I do believe in monogamy. I'm a, I'm a believer in fidelity. I believe in making all my dreams and fantasies come true with one woman and one woman only. And I'm good with that. I am actually great with that. Um, um, as far as whether or not porn can be good or bad, I believe in moderation. I believe that as long as the porn that because it doesn't become a replacement or a substitute 
then you're good. There's nothing wrong with porn being amused. Because yeah, I I know what it's like to be. I know. I definitely know what it's like to have sex and and draw inspiration from certain porn scenes I've seen and bring that into the bedroom and and it bring forth amazing sex. And so I'm not going to go any further because again, I'm going to get some great sleep tonight. If you know what I mean. Um, um, but yeah, um, yeah, that is awesome. Thank you both so much. Cheyenne so much. Fox, Mickey Royale, you guys have been Royale, awesome as been usual. Awesome. Um, every Titty Tuesday, it's going down on Ringside Own Nocturnal. We're doing it big. We talking about we talked about how porn can benefit a marriage, and it can certainly okay, everybody, it can certainly benefit a marriage or relationship if you use it correctly. Make sure you don't abuse it, make sure you don't overuse it, use it deliberately, make sure you're conscious about it. It, and it can certainly benefit because at the end of the day, let's be honest, you don't want the sex to become monotonous. You don't want it to become boring. You don't want it to become routine and predictable. At that point, the sex sucks. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're vanilla or not vanilla. When the, when the routine, when the sex becomes predictable, then you fucked. You are straight up Fuck. So do something about it. I'm not saying porn can can save your marriage, but I'm not saying porn porn cannot condemn your marriage. You know what I'm saying? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Use it for what it's good for. Thank you, everybody. If you're out there, please check us out. Ringsidedebate.com. Uh, find us. Uh, you know, view um, our videos, buy some merch, ringside the base.com forward slash merch. Join the ringside group on Facebook. Just type in ringside LLC and uh, we're going to get it popping. So thank you again and we out this bitch. Let me see if I can stop this broadcast. If I if I exit out, I apologize. Exit out, I apologize.